Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In today's lesson, we're going to continue looking through the standard template library, looking at algorithms, and we're going to be looking at some of the min element and max element functions. So previously in this series, we've checked out min and max. Let's go ahead and dive into the algorithms library. And again, we've covered quite a bit of this. So you can go ahead and check out my website, course.mshot.io, or of course the playlist linked below uh, to see many of these operations that we've done here. Uh, but mind the scrolling here. Uh, if I go all the way down, we are at the minimum and maximum operations, which are starting to get related to some of the numeric types of operations that we might want to do. Uh, and we will look at those later on. Again, make sure you're subscribed for that. Uh, but again, previously we looked at min and max uh, functions here, which return the greatest of given values or the least lesser of two given values. But min element and max element, while related, have this keyword here, which I'm going to highlight, a range. So we're going to look through a range of elements. Now, just to give you a little bit of a refresher, if you didn't watch the previous video, th the idea with the min is, again, just taking in two values and comparing them, right? You could write this function. We talked about in that video why you might want to use min, uh, giving some advantages for correctness, making sure we turn a reference, and of course, providing a comparator. And you also could use an initializer list if you did have multiple values to pull out a min or a max value, which was kind of neat. But again, we want to look at something that's a little bit more flexible here. If you do have a range or more than two values and you want to find the smallest uh, of the elements, here we are with min element. So just taking a look at this, uh, again, some of the different overloads. And again, you'll notice that we've gotten const expert versions, meaning we could do things at compile time uh, in some cases. So that's a huge advantage. But again, we're taking in forward iterators here uh, to the where we want to start and where we want to end here. OK, so this is kind of uh, flexible in the sense here. And then we're importantly returning an iterator. OK, so we're not necessarily returning the element, but we'll have an iterator or pointer uh, or some object, something that is holding or containing uh, an index or a pointer to the smallest element in our container. Right. So we can use this on vectors, lists, um, all of our C++ containers, decks and so on, because they have forward iterators. Uh, support. Uh, again, you can watch my iterator video if you, uh, or series of videos, if you want to understand the different categories between a forward iterator, bidirectional iterator, etc. So, anyways, uh, we'll provide a range here. Uh, now, if we use a custom object, we got to provide our own comparison function here, which I think we'll get to in this video. We should um, have this be complete here, but that's the main thing. Um, and we're not really going to do anything here with the policies um, as of yet here. So again, an important thing to keep in mind uh, as far as the return value goes. Um, and let's kind of illustrate this out again. Uh, so now be able to provide, I mean, and we can think about this as a list here. Maybe I have seven, three, uh, two, and one. And I'll provide an iterator uh, here. So this would be by like list.begin. And the end of my range here, list.end. And it's going to look through all these values. Now, if I have a duplicate, let's add a little duplicate here in the corner here. Oops, sorry, squeezing that in here. Uh, it, it is going to return the first one. So that's just a little note about this return value here. Okay. So again, uh, all this uh, min element is going to do is return us an iterator pointing to the minimum element. Okay. Whether that's a list, a deck, a vector, or whatever. Uh, and then as far as the complexity goes, just depends on, well, what the distance of that range is. Again, maybe you have a custom iterator to do a forward iteration through a graph or a tree structure. Um, so it's it's linear in you know however many elements you're looking at here, okay, which is the right thing to do. Uh, we haven't really looked at implementations too much, but this would actually be a good one to just probably implement on your own. Again, maybe if you're have worked in C or some other language, um, you would imagine how this works. Um, I mean, almost exactly. Um, how it would work. Um, now, now, of course, you don't want to make things sort of backwards, I suppose, by reversing these. But um, yeah, basically, you're just moving your iterator forward until you reach the last element and keeping track of, well, is whatever element I'm looking at less than the smallest element? OK, so they might need a small allocation here. So I have some iterator um, holding your first element. And then again, that's what you're comparing to. OK, so that's the idea. Um, and then here's a little example here. We'll actually just dive into it. Uh, let's go ahead and do it with a vector here. Um, and I'll specify um, the type here because we might want to change this later. Uh, but let's just set up a vector here uh, and put in some elements. 
of various types here. Uh, six, something like that. And then let's go ahead and figure out what the minimum element is here. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to use auto, let's say minimum equals, and I've included my algorithms library here. I'm going to run min element and then provide uh, my iterators here. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be begin, v end. And then we should be, this should be as simple as just saying min element uh and let me actually let's just put out the minimum here let's see if that even prints out here it might give us an address this is just some iterator here uh, but we are going to have to dereference this because it is an iterator here okay so let's go ahead and uh, compile and run this yeah, it's going to give us an error because we don't know how to run this so let's just dereference it uh here we go minimum element and it is negative two here so we do know how to uh, send an integer through the O stream. That was the meaning of that error there. Uh, so, I mean, it works here. Uh, and we could go ahead and do the same thing with the max. We'll just call this maximum. And we're just going to flip this around here. Doesn't modify the container in any way. Again, it's just uh, looking through it. Uh, but let's go ahead and just run this. And I'll provide the maximum and dereference. Uh, when I'm dereferencing to iterator, that means that I am getting the value back, and it's 7. And we can just do a quick eyeball check. Yeah, it looks like 7 here is correct here. Okay, so things are working quite nice. We have min element, max element, no problems there. Let's go ahead and uh, last time we had a lot of fun creating a little like game-like thing. Um, let, let's create a custom structure here. Um, and let's we'll do something similar here. Again, maybe we have a monster. And let's just put in power and strength okay so again what does it mean for the min or the max element if i have a collection of these monsters here uh somewhat of a mystery so we need to provide some function to handle that uh, again we can get that function here it tells us what type of comparison it takes us um, but again we want to um kind of get used to, to reading these um so again if i'm gonna say okay number three here i want to pass a custom comparator Elements are compared using uh, the given binary comparison function. So that means I need two things to compare, binary uh, type here and here. Now these things are gonna be the same type that I'm comparing, but uh, we just need some function here that I can pass in uh, that can handle looking at two elements, right? Because that's what the min and max uh, elements uh, are doing, right? We're looking at this one and this one and trying to compare them, right? So that's why we need the binary function to take care of that. So. Uh, let's go ahead and provide that. And these are going to be our monster for A and uh, monster for B uh, as well, both of those types. Um, and I don't know, uh, you know, the value for A is just going to be A power times A strength. Again, I'm just making this up for this monster based off its two attributes here. Uh, and then value B. Uh, the compiler is probably going to optimize this, but it is nice to just uh, break this out. And I'll just compare if value uh, A is less than value uh, B. Uh, and that's it. That's our monster comparison function here. Okay, and you might want to name it something like monster compare or whatever. Um, okay, so that seems pretty reasonable. Let's create a vector of these uh, monsters here. So we can compare them. Uh, here, monster... And I'm going to go ahead and uh, initialize these. And let's see here. I should be able to, since I've specified a monster here, just provide in some values for their strength. Again, they're just being multiplied. Uh, let's try to make this easy, uh, I suppose, <laughs> just so we can verify. Uh, okay, so our strongest one, 10 times 11, will be at the end. And our uh, weakest one at the front here. And then we'll do the uh, same thing here. It's good just taking in our values. Uh, and here, I'll comment out this example so we can use the same code effectively. Something like this. And we should be getting iterators to our monsters here. Now, it's gonna, we don't know how to print out a monster, so we are going to have to implement that. We had to do that last time as well. Um, I never remember it. I wouldn't expect you to remember it. Um, <laughs> Um, although if I do this enough times here, uh, I will. Let's see, we need O stream, and then this is the function that we need to 
uh, override here. Okay, we need to know how to uh, handle this operator here. That takes in a stream, uh, the type, and then return uh, that value here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to go ahead and set this up here. Uh, with monster. Okay, let's see here. Uh, let's delete that. Monster. Uh, the type. I'm just going to say it's M. And let's see. What do we want to return here uh, to our O stream? Let's do the, uh, I don't know, monster. Let's actually just put the power and the strength here just so we can kind of verify. Monster and then the M dot power. And M dot strength here. Okay, so that's what it'll print out every time uh, for our min and max elements. Let's see if we got that right in the first go. Uh, whoops, not quite here. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. So we got our monster. We're going to do the beginning and the end here. And let's see here. What did we do wrong? Oh, it's telling me something about uh, monster not being derived here. Ah, let's see here. I think I just uh, messed this up here. Cons. Let's see. I put things in the wrong order there. Let's see. Did I make this mistake last video? I can't remember. Uh, let me go ahead and scroll up here. Uh, let's see. If it gives us a good hint, always good to know how to debug some of these things here. Uh, let's see. Maybe I skip by it here. Um, monster. I can make a copy of it. Oh, I know. Um, there are a few issues going on here. One, we didn't pass in our custom comparator here. Because we have to know how to compare. Let's go ahead and let's just go ahead and make sure that much works here. Uh, and let's see here. Okay, so that's working. And then let's let's just tackle one of these. See if we're still getting complaints here. Okay, perfect. Uh, so that was the issue here. Uh, Got to know how to compare these. Um, you know, it will be interesting if in the standard library. And, and you could write your own. I mean, this is where you use these as building blocks, right? And you could write your own function that maybe looked at what the type is and then selected a comparator or something if you're trying to build a more resilient library. Uh, but anyways, this will do the trick here. So anyways, the min element is monster here with the power and strength of 7 times 2, 14 in the max of 10 times 11 here. Again, kind of an arbitrary uh, calculation for us, but just the power and the strength here. Uh, but that works and that's all you need here. And you can have as many uh, or as few, I suppose, elements as you want here. Again, just to be clear on how this is working, I mean, let's go ahead and say that we had just one uh, monster here. Uh, oops, let me uh, go back down here. Uh, so if I just change it to having only one in our collection, Right, it works just the same. It is the min and the max, so no problem there. All right, so hopefully that uh, makes sense here. Um, I'll get rid of that. Uh, and this falls in line you know, nicely with the previous min and max, but now we can work with ranges here. So again, you can kind of figure this stuff out as you do more of these examples. Um, but again, nice building blocks to have. Again, maybe you'd use this for something like, you know, if you had a custom type here, like uh, these monsters, and you wanted to write like a maybe a simple selection sort or something if you knew you didn't have a lot of these. Uh, so effectively, you could just pull out the minimum every time, uh, and then you'd have to move or transfer or do something with this uh, iterator in your collection. Um, but that could be, again, a reason to use this kind of stuff. Um, so you just have a lot of generic building blocks uh, to work on your types versus having to write a custom selection sort uh, that removes the max or the min value. Um, again, just some ideas about how you might want to use this. So anyways, folks, I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Kind of fun to write up here uh, on min element and max element. Uh, and as always, you can check out uh, my courses here and track your progress uh, for the C++ language is free here, um, just in case that's an easier way for you to track your progress. So as always, folks, thanks for your time and attention. Hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.